How are y'all doing today? Good, how are you? I am good. Are you guys ready to get started? Oh, yeah. All right, so my first question is for Tony. What was your initial inspiration for this film? Yeah, so the initial inspiration was a short story I wrote in college. Um, it was all based around the last memory I had of my dad. Um, so the memory is actually in the film. It's the whole arcade sequence. Um, and I ended up making that into a short film in college. Um, from there, I kind of knew that, you know, Icon was always going to be my first feature film. And yeah, now it's my first feature film. And how does that feel for you for your first feature film to be coming out to the public? Uh, I'm a little nervous, but I'm also excited, you know, because I'm confident, you know, we got such a great team behind it and, you know, Parker and Devin are just amazing on screen. So um, I think if I didn't have them, I'd be even more nervous, but, <laughs> um, you know, I think we're in really good shape. And my next question is actually for Parker and Devin. What do you guys hope audiences will gain from seeing this film and seeing the love story between your characters? That's a good question. I hope that they gain uh, a sense of respect for anyone who may be um, dealing with similar circumstances or be in a, a relationship in high school, that they gain a sense of res respect for the person that they're going through that with. Um, they gain a sense of mutual trust for those people and that they recognize that all problems, no matter how intimidating they may be, can be dealt with through cooperation and through, um, you know, actually putting effort towards it and not just getting angry at, at a situation. And I know um, if you've seen the film that Sam has a bit of a struggle with recognizing that up until um, later in the film. But yeah, I would just hope that people can, can gain an understanding of that and gain, gain some perspective that it's all about how you look at things when you're dealing with them. Yeah, I think these two characters start with a great deal of care for each other, and that's how they get into the situation that they get into. And um, even though they do have their struggles and struggle to communicate and come to a decision about this, um, they do, you know, have a moment in the car where um, they're trying to decide how they're going to handle this. And she says, what do you want to do? And um, Sam says, I want to do whatever you want to do. And I think that's such a powerful statement um, and, a, and a beautiful way to start um, their relationship. And yeah, even though they um, take their moments apart, they do the care for each other and the love that they have for each other eventually brings them back together, so. And with the portrayal of Sam and Anna, what were you guys able to learn about yourselves through these characters? That's a good question. Devin, you want to take it first? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh man, yeah, I think Anna deals with this situation and with her partner who is going through some very valid struggles, some that, you know, just come with um, his family dynamic and some that he gets himself into, but she deals with that with, with such strength and grace and warmth. And um, yeah, if I could emulate any bit of that um, in my own relationships, that would be, that would be a win. <laughs> For me, it's probably the growth that Sam is a character and the growth of the characters around him um, and kind of taking that to heart, knowing that every single one of us is going to have adverse situations. Everyone's going to go through something that makes them uncomfortable and puts them in a bit of a, a tight spot. And kind of going through that, I, even just as an actor portraying a character, you, you go through those things in your head and in your, in your heart. And I felt as if throughout production, I grew with Sam as a character and I, as a person became more mature and recognized that the people around you are what matter most. It's not all about oneself, so. And my next question is actually for Tony. With you using your hometown as the setting of this film, how are you able to use St. Petersburg as a part of the storytelling process? Yeah, so that was very important to me because people that don't know about St. Pete should. It's, you know, it's not your typical Florida town. Um, yes, there's beaches, yes, there's all this, but there's so much more. And it's, you know, I didn't grow up, you know, when things are portrayed in movies, like with peaches and a bunch of old, I grew up in a city as it's portrayed. So 
I wanted to, you know, utilize some of those locations. So like a lot of the spots in the film, you know, whether it's like the overpass or like under, I would ride as a kid. And so it was important when we were like location scouting that, you know, some of the spots have like some meaning. So we try to feature, you know, iconic spots um, like Tropicana Field or just, you know, like cobblestone roads, things that are not normal to like portraying for Florida. Like you don't really kind of see that kind of, gritty look to it. While exploring the topic of teenage pregnancy, what was the greatest concern for the three of you with putting this on the screen? Um, so I, I think the, I think the probably, at least in the writing process, it was that, um, you know, both sides had reason for me. I wanted, because, you know, that's the whole point in the film is that they're both going through it much different ways. So, um, yeah, you know, Sam is obviously internalizing a lot of things. And while they are being open, they're not, you know, there's, Anna's a lot farther ahead in the story than Sam, <laughs> you know, um, which is generally the case, like at least for my personal experience. <laughs> so, um, you know, and that was important for me to capture um, you know, a lot of the male side of what would happen in this situation. Cause there's a lot of great films and a lot of great shows out there that really focus in on, you know, teenage pregnancy. But um, I thought what was important was to show what happens to that guy when he's by himself, what happens, you know, when he's got to take care of stuff or, you know, what, what bars is he setting for himself? And um, something uh, Devin can probably talk a little bit more about, um, you know, there's this idea of like chasing like masculinity and I got to be the man. I got to find my dad so I can be a man. Um, and, you know, that's just not important. It was more about, um, you know, looking at all the women and all the people that he had surrounded around him to, you know, be the parent that he needed to be. Yeah, and Tony's talked about it um, some. I don't think it's a huge secret, but there were a couple alternate endings for their story. And um, we had a lot of conversations about that, the three of us. And, you know, I appreciate not all young people are afforded the privilege of taking time to make this decision and recognizing all of their options for some people like that's not the way that it goes and these characters are and I think it's important that we recognize that privilege. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned before, Sam's character being on the same page with I mean they're not they're they're not always right on this. Age, they do have a little bit of trouble communicating, but um, they do have that conversation in the car where he puts it sort of in her hands. And I think that's really important to talk about. And um, yeah, you know, they make a decision in the end to like leap off the cliff and, and take this journey together as a family. And, um, and that is for some people and it's not right for all people. And so I'm glad that we do acknowledge the other sides. Um, of this decision making and yeah like Tony just talked about you know Sam's character and Ben Parker can speak more to this but yeah it's chasing this idea of what it means to be a man and what it means to be a father and is so convinced that this absent male figure in his life is the person who's going to help him unlock that and I love that this movie shows us that yeah it's the women in his life Anna his mom his sister his sister's mom um, that are going to sort of guide him into his manhood and this fatherhood so that uh, and the idea of handling the concept of teen pregnancy I think Tony did a really good job of not romanticizing it not making it fantastical but grounding it in reality and recognizing that it's a very real um, situation for a lot of people. And it's not just something that we can not glorify, wouldn't be the right word, but to romanticize in, in the world of film and, and make it something, make it out to be something that it's not. So I think all around with the script, the direction and everything, it was just handled very well. Absolutely. And my next question is also for the three of you. What was the collaboration process for this film? Um, yeah, so I'll start, um, and kind of just let the two take it away after, but, um, 
you know, I like to work in a very collaborative setting. Um, and so, you know, being the writer, I had the opportunity when I was directing to say, hey, let's collaborate on this. Does this sound right? Does this feel right? How would you say this? And that was really important to me to get that authentic and real feel to it because, you know, I know how I speak. I'm one person and I wanted these to all be individual people. Um, and Parker and Devin did such a great job just being adaptive and being like able to change and kind of just make those characters their own. Um, you know, both of them would come up and say, well, you know, I think Sam would do this, or I think Anna would do this in this situation. And I'd say, okay, well, yeah, let's try to take that way. And then now I ended 10 times, we can probably end up using that. So. Yeah, looking at the script, um, before we would shoot something, Tony would give the both of us general ideas or words that we need to hit. And from there, um, we could kind of make it our own. And Tony was so open about uh, the dialogue, the way that uh, things are said, the tone, the inflection and everything. And sometimes during a take, just random words would just pop out, for me at least. And there would be moments where Tony would say, yeah, do that. That was good. Or there'd be moments where he said, no, <laughs> don't do that. So we were always very about the dialogue, uh, what each character is going through internally, and how they would react, how Devin and I would think that they would react in that situation as well. Yeah, it's such a testament to the way that Tony wants to move forward in the filmmaking world. Um, not everybody is willing to be collaborative and have those conversations and give agency to the artists who are making their vision possible, um, especially when time is so valuable and you, you may be working on an indie where time is even more valuable and it's just like, yeah, it can be such a stressful environment. And so to be willing to take the time and slow down and have those conversations. And, you know, a lot of times for artists, it's not that you want it, your idea doesn't need to win. It's not about whose idea is winning, but just the fact that you're working in an environment where someone is willing to have that conversation um, means so much. So yeah, I'm very grateful to Tony for that. And my final question for the three of you is if you guys can choose one word to describe the film, what would it be and why? Um, I can start if you want, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> I would say intimate. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I, I guess you did say why, but intimate. Um, and if not intimate, then authentic. Because like we touched on early, earlier, it really is uh, a slice of life. And we've said it time and time again. We'll continue to say it. But it's such a deep dive into these people's lives. And it is really an intimate experience for whoever's going to be watching the film. Yeah, yeah. so. Go ahead, Tony. Okay, yes. Yeah, <laughs> um, I would build off of what Parker said. I mean, I would use real. Um, every time I kept going through the film and, you know, thinking about when I was writing, it, I was like, is this real? Is this, you know, this isn't just heightened. It's not movie land. Is this something that people would go through? So, you know, this is a real, real film. It's a, you know, real performances, real motion going into it. And, it, you know, it's based off of some real events. So, um, you know, it's not, it's not fantasy. It's not that people go through this every day. And I think that's, you know, something that was important to capture about it. Um, yeah, I might say tender and there are rough and tumble parts of this movie. It's certainly not that across the board, but I think, yeah, the love story you have between Sam and Anna, the way that Tony approached this process, um, and yeah, the, the other relationships that Sam has with the women in his life, I think, um, and especially the moment that this movie ends on, which might be sort of unexpected and was definitely a fun surprise for me. Um, yeah, I think it's just treated with such care, so 